Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norvell. This edition Stop Stories. St. Lucia commemorates Vector Awareness Week. The Ministry of Equity sensitizes 2021 Community After School Program facilitators. And the Ministry of Health and Wellness cautions the public on the Saharan dust. St. Lucia joins the global community in commemorating Vector Awareness Week, which is marked in country by the commencement of the rainy season. Vector Awareness Week this year seeks to bring attention and support to efforts to prevent vector-borne diseases and is being observed under the theme, Act Now, Know How, Vectors Live, Breed, Feed. Hermody Mark tells us more. Vector Awareness Week is held annually by the Ministry of Health and Wellness. This is in an effort to educate the populace on the dangers of vector-borne diseases and on vector management in the home. The observance is being held from June 7 to 13, 2021, under the theme Act Now, Know How, Vectors Leave, Breed, Feed. This coincides with the commencement of the rainy season, a potential risk period for vector disease outbreaks. At the launch of Vector Awareness Week on Monday, 7th June, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Benson Emil, explained the importance of the public's participation in the week-long observance. Vector borne diseases does not discriminate. It affects people of all races, ages, and income levels. And it is because of this we must raise awareness of the diseases its symptoms so we can more easily identify it and more effectively manage it. This week and leading into the rest of the year, as we observe Vector Awareness Week, let us equip ourselves with the knowledge, tools and resources available to fight in the battle against vector-borne diseases. In 2020, St. Lucia experienced one of the worst dengue fever outbreaks, recording a total of 1,306 cases and three resultant deaths. St. Lucia continues to be affected by vector-borne diseases, especially dengue fever. Medical Officer of Health Dr. Glensford Joseph said cases of the disease have been recorded in country for 2021. So far, for 2021, the Department of Health and Wellness confirmed 14 cases of dengue, 10 of which occurred within the first five weeks of this year, with the last three five weeks interval occurring for one to two of the cases. Of these, 68% were male, 21% were hospitalized, and no fatalities have been recorded thus far. Due to constraints brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic, majority of the activities for the week will take place virtually. Cheryl Eugene St. Romain is the Assistant Chief Environmental Officer in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The Department of Health and Wellness is not deterred and remains committed to the objective of reaching the masses and our approach this year will be for the most part virtual, which takes in the airing of public service announcements, development of television productions, and dissemination of media cards, which will be the highlight of the week. Vector control officers on the ground will be intensifying surveillance activities and conducting fogging operations to control the Aedes aegypti mosquito, while our baiting program will continue concurrently. Other activities include the launch of the official Facebook page of the Environmental Health Division and a television production entitled The Vector Encounter, A Closer Look, which will focus on the importance of reducing vectors. Activities to commemorate Vector Awareness Week will continue throughout the year. From the Government Information Service, I'm Huma Dimak reporting. The Department of Agriculture is continuing efforts to raise awareness about the significance of the role played by professional pest managers in maintaining the nation's quality of life. In that thrust, the Division of Plant Research and Development of the Ministry of Agriculture joined with global partners in observing World Pest Day this past weekend. We hear more from Anicia Antoine. 
St. Lucia's tropical climate facilitates a year-round crop growing season and supports continuous generations of both pests and beneficial organisms. With the emergence of pests threatening the production of crops, the Department of Agriculture is now increasing efforts and emphasis on pest control methods not aimed at complete eradication but rather at maintaining pest populations below economic thresholds. This year's observance focused attention on building awareness on the importance of pest control to protect food, human health and the environment. In highlighting the importance of persons being knowledgeable about the current pests which may affect the agriculture industry in St. Lucia, Chief Plant Research Officer at the Plant Research and Development Division, Hannah Romain, notes that her division has been able to keep pests and diseases such as the Black Sikotoka and Moko disease at bay. Um, over the years we have been sharing a um, few pests that are not present in St. Lucia but are major concern to us. Um, one is the banana fusarium oxysporum cubense, which we call it TR4. Um, it's not present in St. Lucia, it's looming on the horizon. Currently, it's in, in Colombia, it has moved to Peru. And of course, we understand how our banana industry, how sensitive it can be. And um, at present, we are putting all measures in place to ensure that we keep this one out of St. Lucia. Um, pest management is very costly. And over the years, what we have come to realize is that the pests, when they do come in, there's no control. You, eradication is just not possible. So um, we are urging the public to be aware of the pests that move on commodities. Ms. Romaine notes that her department's initiatives to both control invasive species and to augment public awareness of pest control methods are in keeping with the Department of Agriculture's overall goal to increase food safety. Activities such as the Don't Pack a Pest campaign have provided a platform to raise awareness about the dangers of transporting food and agricultural commodities across the region. She states that the Department of Agriculture will continue to provide support to farmers across St. Lucia with effective pest control solutions to help prevent the risk of crop loss. Our farmers are the primary producers. They ensure that they provide the food that we have on our tables. And whatever activities that they are engaged in on the farm is critical for our health tomorrow. Now, just note that we've now understanding that to access foreign markets, you need to be able to meet the, 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 the residue limits, for example, um, in terms of pesticide residues that you need to be able to meet residual limits for, the, for your country of export. Thankfully, the ministry, the government of St. Lucia has seen, had seen the need to put this in place. Now we are able to tap into foreign markets and we are now able to conduct tests to ensure that the foods that we are exporting meet the requirements of the export market. The public is reminded that permission must be granted from the Plant Research and Development Division before any plant materials are brought into the country. Individuals interested in bringing in new plant commodities and agricultural inputs such as crops, flowers and fertilizers must first visit the Plant Research and Development Division for a pest risk analysis. Once completed and accepted, a plant import permit will be issued to the applicant allowing the importation of that commodity. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment held a one-day workshop at the Chase Gardens Human Resource Center on Monday, June 7, 2021. The workshop was designed to facilitate the transfer of critical knowledge and skills needed to enhance the competencies of the community after-school program facilitators. Here's Chevrai Marius with the details. The Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment held a one-day workshop at the Chase Garden Human Resource Center on Monday, June 7, 2021. The workshop was designed to facilitate the transfer of critical knowledge and skills needed to enhance the competencies of the Community After School Program CASP facilitators. Mr. Jim Xavier is the Deputy Director of the Community Service Unit in the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment. One of the strong points of the program is dealing with behavior modification in students who have been identified with some behavioral problems. And so we want 
the feedback that they are improving both in the schoolwork, in the behavior at home and at school, and so they would be reintegrated and would be so, so, sort of referred to as normal students once again. Workshop facilitator and community after-school program coordinator Antonia Rene Marius stated that as a result of this workshop, CAS facilitators will be better placed to examine behavioral issues and plan interventions to deal with the challenges brought about by the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. If children being at home all of those times, um, children being shut in away from their friends, their playmates and so forth, you know the children have a lot of pent up frustration and, and anger and so forth. So it's just a way to help the facilitators prepare so they can help the children deal with those issues when they, if and when they come up at the program. One workshop participant who applauded the venture was Miss Silly Bernard, who stated how important it is to get trained when dealing with children who are in need of assistance. It is important to get um, trained to, um, to be in this program because you're dealing with kids, kids that have problems, kids that are, have low self-esteem, those that need help in different areas that we are not trained to and we don't want to go ahead in this thing and um, and further damage or cause more harm than good. So it's, it's really good to be trained and to know how to help them get better in whatever area that they're lacking. The Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, Mrs. Velda Joseph, stated that persons involved in the delivery of the community after-school program must be aware of the ministry's mandate. We believe that before we actually implement those programs within communities, that there needs to be an orientation of facilitators as well as coordinators, all of those persons who would be involved in the delivery of the services within the programs or within the centers. The reason for that is we believe that persons need to be on the same page with us. They need to understand the thinking of the ministry, the expectations of the ministry, the philosophy of the ministry as it relates to the delivery of community after school programs. They need to understand that there are standards that need to be upheld as we deliver these programs. She also stated that with the economic situation brought about by the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic, the ministry has now to limit the number of community after-school programs that can be implemented around the island. We have had 15 centres. Um, this year, of course, we understand the, the situation, the economic situation as a result of the impact of COVID-19. And so we are limited in the number of centres that we can implement. This year, we have three centres. We have the Fuasho after school program, the Marshall after school program, and we will be introducing a program at the Caroly Chase Gardens HRDC. These programs are being supported through the YEP project, the Youth Empowerment Project, and that project is financed jointly by the Caribbean Development Bank and the Government of St. Lucia. And so we want to thank both the bank and the Government of St. Lucia for providing the necessary resources to support these programs. The community after-school program will run from June 8th to July 30th, 2021, following which the ministry will host a series of summer programs in August before recommencement of the community after-school program in September 2021. Reporting from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, I am Chevroy Marius. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has been advised by the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, that high concentrations of Saharan dust are expected to affect the eastern and southeastern Caribbean over the next two to three days. It is highly likely that during this period, particulate matter levels will be above the outdoor air quality guidelines that have been established by the World Health Organization. As such, there may be an increase in symptoms in people with asthma and other respiratory illnesses. Given the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, it is even more important that people wear face masks to contain droplets from sneezing and coughing, and the continued deterioration in air quality may pose additional problems for the most vulnerable.
The Ministry of Health and Wellness implores people with allergies, sinusitis, asthma and respiratory conditions to be on the alert for flare-ups in their condition and seek medical attention if they experience difficulty breathing. They are also asked to limit outdoor activities and to ensure they use properly fitting masks when they go outside. Students sitting the 2021 regional examinations are given additional time to prepare. We get the details from CARICOM News Times to Sanking English Francis. Students sitting the 2021 regional examinations were given two additional weeks of final preparations. Dr. Wayne Wesley, Registrar of CXC, recently announced the Caribbean Examination Council's decision to postpone all upcoming examinations by two weeks following consultations with regional stakeholders. Council approved the delay of the sitting of the regional examinations by a further two weeks. This will provide candidates with extra time to prepare for the examinations. Therefore, examinations will commence on Thursday, the 28th of June, 2021, with release of results the last week in September to the first week in October as previously communicated. Extension of submission of school-based assessment, SBA. The deadline for submission of SBA will be extended to 30th June, 2021 for all CSET and CAPE examinations. In addition, the topics which were released on May 10th, 2021, characters would have submitted queries and Council would have noted that CXC is currently responding and in this regard, a review is being done to ensure that there is full clarity regarding what has been submitted in terms of the broad topics. Caribbean Examinations Council's Registrar and Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Wayne Wesley, speaking there. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Here at St. Lucia Distillers, we produce an award-winning range of rums and rum products. We export our rums to the Caribbean, North America and Europe. Standards facilitate our entry into overseas markets. In the rum business, it is critical that our distillers and blenders Get it right. St. Lucia Distillers is HACCP certified. We use two standards from SLBS, the standard for labeling of pre-packaged foods, SLNS 1-3-2014 and the national specification for rum, SLNS 12-2003. We are also a registered member of the West Indies Rum and Spirit Producers Association, WISPA. SLBS ensures that we are up to standard and world class. This message is brought to you by the Commonwealth Standards Network. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur, Madame, Department of Responsibility for Information and Government of St. Lucie, ça c'est GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, Capozato Nouvelle Aquayol. Visit all, Primus Hutchinson. Cette ci j'ai continué avec à continuer chez mes positions, destination de pré préférence pour visitation touristique et ça a renforcé capacité de coopération PIA, hot pest, maladie, corona, ou pour qui sortit hot autorité des affaires touristiques cette ci comme tout et qui visitation touriste pour cette ci j'ai dépasser sa pays a déjà fait préparation pour en saison carême là selon rapport autorité touristique là cette ci cette ci j'ai bien c'est 41% visitation touristique sorti en yon assez plus au euh sous la place touristique pour pays cette ci business touristique là qui a continué pour augmenter et qu'au résultat tu ca ca l'occasionner plus travail plus business et aussi plus l'argent pour entrer en PIA, comme plusieurs grands pays et agences ni yeux fixés à ce cette ci depuis le 4e mois de juin 2021. Cette ci virée ouvert barrière touristique 
et j'ai enregistré plus que 81 141 touristes. Et si ça a dépassé 35% que les autorités touristiques déjà estimé. Finalement, c'est même qui passait. Les mots, les étrangers qui visitaient cette ici, ont augmenté par plus que 3 000. Les autorités touristiques cette ici étaient présentes pour bienvenir avions American Airlines, Hot JFK à New York et Dallas Fort Worth. Uh, DFW uh, commerce des neuf passagers étrangers débattus en pays et aussi qui étaient bien vaccinés et qui suivent tous ces protocoles qui étaient déjà en place. Mais des affaires touristiques, cette ci on a Dominique Fede déclaré que cette ci pour côté espérance un voyage hors avion American Airlines sorti JFK depuis 2019. Il dit aussi ça a posé un dégoût compétition pour avion JetBlue et situation ça là peut marcher en faveur cette ci Autorité touristique uh, car ouais visitation uh, DFW con yon qui en rôle avantage pour cette ci comme c'est une à ces destinations qui a apporté en plus que 4.7 millions de passagers. Ministre touristique là car uh, quoi qu'il ça c'est un bon coup de chapeau pour secteur touristique pays là Monsieur Fédé c'est comprendre mais fait comprendre que ça c'est un grand avantage quand les gens considèrent pas de maladie de corona projet à sous cette ci et ajouter que ça a montré confiance que plusieurs grands pays la terre ni toujours en industrie touristique cette ci il y a un grand artiste Christy Gustav présenté les les officiers avions American Airlines et puis divers produits qui étaient pétués qui a montré divers ça pays à qu'a offert et ces étrangers là tu aussi vous suivez divers cadeaux comme étrangers hot Dallas scoyons étrangers hot Dallas trouver un puits pour rester trois jours en hôtel Sugar Beach Viceroy Resorts American Airlines qui a fait voyage tous les samedis à deux heures et demi après midi et pour Dallas là c'est pour Dallas et pour New York et qui a quitté à trois heures après midi Si mon public cette ci pas enregistré un bureau des affaires élections, il n'y a pas ni les champs libres, et bien pas qu'il a participé à un exercice pour les affaires élections en façon pour trouver droit pour voter. C'est assistant chef officier élection en bureau élection, puis il y a Mme Olympia Lennel qui fait des déclarations sur ça, dit qu'il y a une discussion à sa télévision NTN. Selon Mme Lennel Magwe, c'est un choix uni pour décider si ou qu'il voter, voté, eh bien, pas qu'il voté, pour participer à la Constitution. C'est seulement mieux et qu'il est possible pour faire ça. C'est si vous venez registrer nous. Parce que pour faire ça, on est pour registrer. Avec ces... Um, pour, pour ça registrer, um, ou vous avez fait... Um, il y a un place où vous avez mis un débat en place pour registrer. Avec pour registrer, ou vous avez un citoyen, PIA, ou vous avez 18 ans, avec un citoyen Commonwealth qui a été un PIA pour 7 ans continuellement. Avec... Le ou ni, le ou jani, tout se bagay sa la, ou sa vini en bio electoral, avec vini registre, mais ou bouzen batiste ou, ek an let hot NIC. Sa se requirement pour ou sa registre. Département agricole, cette le si, te observe ensemble pi lot pi international, jounè uh, protection, ek sécurité pou manje. Sa se te li 7 an mois de jen 2021. Se yon observance, uh, toute nation, ça c'est la Nation Unie, est établie depuis 2019, avec secteur agricole et manger à cette ci qui a continué pour, pour tuer diverses façons pour servir manger à manière qui s'en est sauve, avec la protection pour santé. Le département agricole qui a créé l'initiative de la a réduit significativement les gens qui peuvent tomber malades parce qu'ils n'ont pas à manger ça qui est propre. Il y a un chef officier des affaires recherche à la division. Plan et développement, Hannah Roman déclare que le département a continué pour voir que les cultivateurs recevaient tout le support qui est nécessaire pour faire assurer que les produits agricoles sont en degré sécurité internationale. Coordinateur pour le projet national pour le programme de manger à l'école, 
qui représente l'Organisation des Affaires Agricoles et Mangées en la terre, ça c'est FAO, Cherry and Smith, de qui vous avez aidé les cultivateurs à ce moment pour traiter les produits et d'un oui, qui a servi une bonne technique de ménagement et programme pour soins des enfants de l'école. Et ça a commencé à adresser ce qui est nécessaire à la sécurité des marchés. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je vous remercie pour vous remercier de conserver la vie. Je vous remercie pour l'autre nouvelle en Coyol. À présent, je vous remercie pour cette chaîne. Et ça nous amène à la fin de NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norvell.